Ishanikon, World Shapers. World Interaction. Here you can find all sorts of rules on how your characters can interact with their environment and the world that they occupy. Rest. Your characters will need to rest and recharge eventually after a day full of adventure and conflict. They have a couple of options to do so. A full rest takes 10 hours, eight of which have to be spent sleeping. It restores all of your characters' vitality and willpower and half of their narrative momentum. Any temporary vitality that they might have is reset to zero. Your character can only take one full rest within 24 hours. A half rest takes only five hours, four of which have to be spent sleeping. A half rest grants the same benefits as a full rest, but can only be used once after a full rest before it stops having any effect. It only restores half of your character's vitality and willpower and no narrative momentum. Having two half rests within 24 hours makes them count as a full rest. A short rest is a half hour break of light activity. It restores half of your character's vitality and willpower. Any temporary vitality that they might have is reset to zero. Your character can only take one short rest after a full or half rest. Objects. Objects are almost anything that is not a creature or item. They can be anything from a chair or a box to a wall or the ground. Most objects do not do much on their own, but they can be targeted by abilities and attacks. They can also be destroyed. This opens up new tactical options like making the ceiling of a room collapse on your enemies or making your own door by blasting a hole in the wall. Objects have their own vitality and armor depending on their material. Those values can change depending on your setting and how powerful a normal character is. You can feel free to adjust them how you like so that they fit your game world. You can find examples you can use as guidelines on how strong materials should be in the table shown here. Objects fail all DRs and skill checks and all attacks that target them automatically hit. Objects have an initiative of zero. Objects have resistance against non-area of effect ranged weapon attacks and vulnerability against area of effect weapon attacks. Objects can have the following properties. Hardened. Its vitality and armor are twice as high. Soft. Its vitality and armor are halved. Indestructible. It can only be damaged by very few means and has enough durability to survive something like an atomic bomb without any real damage. Hollow. Its vitality is halved. Regeneration. It regains half of its vitality at the end of each round. Flammable. It catches fire if damaged through heat or shock damage, which gives it the burning status effect. When the burning damages it, it also damages any creature or object within one meter of it by the same amount. Explosive. This object explodes if damaged through heat or shock damage. When it explodes, every creature and object within two meters has to make a constitution DR against 14. On a failure, they take 20 heat damage. The GM can adjust this damage. On a success, they take only half as much damage. Conductive. Every creature and object within one meter of this object must make a constitution DR against 14 when this object is hit by shock damage. On a failure, they receive half of the shock damage. Other conductive objects do not trigger this property if they receive this shock damage. Freeze burst. This object is vulnerable to cold damage. It explodes if destroyed by cold damage. When it explodes, every creature and object within 2 meters has to make a constitution DR against 14. On a failure, they take 30 cold damage. The GM can adjust this damage. On a success, they take only half as much damage. Splintering. It bursts into splinters if it is destroyed by physical damage. When it splinters, every creature and object within one meter has to make a constitution DR against 14. On a failure, they take 10 physical damage. The GM can adjust this damage. On a success, they take only half as much damage. Objects react differently to different types of damage. In this table, you can see their vulnerabilities, resistances, and immunities. Movement. Any creature with at least one free hand can attempt to climb most surfaces. Their effective movement is halved while they do so. 
The GM can force a creature to make an athletics or nimbleness check if they think the surface is hard to climb. On a failure, the creature cannot climb it. The GM can also decide that something is impossible to climb. Any creature can normally swim. Their effective movement is halved while they do so. The GM can force a creature to make an athletics check if they think that it would be difficult to swim, like if they were wearing heavy armor or they are swimming through rough waters. On a failure, they start sinking. Any creature can jump as far as 3 meters plus their strength bonus if they have a running start of 3 meters and half as much if they do not. Their jump height is equal to a fifth of their jumping distance if they have a running start of at least 3 meters and half as much if they do not. A creature that tries to jump further or higher than their strength stat allows has to make an athletics or nimbleness check. The GM can freely adjust the standard jumping distance and height to make them fit the setting. A creature uses up their movement while jumping through the air as if they were moving normally. However, if they are still in the air when they are jumping and run out of movement, they still finish their jump, gaining negative movement equal to the distance that they moved. Negative movement carries over to your next turn, unlike positive movement. You can only jump if you have at least one meter of movement left. Falling. If a creature falls more than three meters, they receive fall damage. For every three meters, they receive 1d6 physical damage. The damage increases to a d10 for every three meters if the creature is of the size category big plus or bigger. The damage is reduced to a 1d4 for every 3 meters if they are of the size category small. The creature does not receive any fall damage if they are of the size category small minus or smaller. If a creature falls 30 meters or more, half the number of dice and replace them with dice that are twice as big. Add the new dice size every 6 meters to the fall damage until you reach 60 meters. Fall damage does not increase beyond 60 meters. If a creature or object falls on another creature or object, the other creature or object also receives the fall damage. They can, however, decide to make either a dexterity or strength DR against 15. The DR is made with disadvantage if the falling creature or object is of a bigger size category than the creature they are falling onto. It is made with advantage if the falling creature or object is of a smaller size category. On a successful dexterity DR, they can move to a free space next to where the creature or object fell and avoid the damage. On a successful strength DR, they can catch the creature and prevent all fall damage to themselves and the falling creature or object and can either grab them, let them climb them, or put them in a free space next to them. Exhaustion the adventures of your character are rarely cozy. They sometimes have to push themselves beyond their limits. This may cause them to become exhausted. Some extreme situations can therefore cause them to gain levels of exhaustion. A creature gains one level of exhaustion if 24 hours pass without having a half or full rest. A creature gains one level of exhaustion if 24 hours pass without them eating enough. Most creatures only need one full meal or one ration per day not to start gaining exhaustion. The amount needed is doubled multiplicatively for each size category above medium and halved multiplicatively for each size category below medium. A creature gains one level of exhaustion if 24 hours pass without them drinking enough. The levels of exhaustion they gain increase by one for each subsequent day that they do not drink anything. A medium creature needs about 1.5 liters or one full water container per day to prevent exhaustion. The amount needed is doubled multiplicatively for each size category above medium and halved multiplicatively for each size category below medium. A creature gains one level of exhaustion if exposed to extreme hot or cold weather without proper protection for one hour if they fail an endurance DR against 10. The DR increases by 1 for each passing hour they are exposed to the weather. Resistance and immunity to heat damage make a creature immune to the effects of extremely hot weather. The same is true for cold damage and extremely cold weather. A creature loses two levels of exhaustion after a full rest on a day where they had enough to eat and drink. 
A creature can hold their breath for 0.5 minutes times their constitution bonus, plus 1.5 minutes, a minimum of 30 seconds total. After that time passed, they gain two levels of exhaustion after each round that they cannot gain air. They lose the levels of exhaustion that they gained this way if they can breathe for a full round. The GM can adjust all of these numbers so that they fit better with the setting. Light and Vision Creatures can have different ways of experiencing and sensing their environment. Every creature has normal vision by default. Normal vision is roughly equivalent to how most humans can see. It allows you to see within the normal light spectrum and worsens if it gets darker. Without light, it does not work. There are other ways a creature can sense their environment. These alternative ways of perceiving are called visions. Most visions can be gained through abilities and features. Some visions still work if you are blinded. Also, some visions do not require a direct line of sight to work like normal vision. Here is a list of all visions. Atomic vision. You can see everything on an atomic scale. Dimensional vision. You can sense anomalies in the space-time continuum and pocket or parallel dimensions close to your current one. Electromagnetic vision. You can detect if something is emitting electromagnetic waves and what kind of waves they are. Life vision. You can sense the life force of biological creatures and roughly feel how strong their body and spirit are. Night vision. You can see in the dark but cannot see different colors if there is no bright light source. Normal vision. The default vision that most creatures have. You can see the normal visible spectrum of light. Omega vision. You can sense the true form of every object and creature. Psychic vision. You can sense minds and psionic energy within range. The lesser the mind, the harder it is to detect. Seismic vision. You can sense anything that is touching the same solid object you are. Smell vision. Your sense of smell is so good that you can effectively see anything with a scent within range. Sound vision. You can detect any object or creature that makes a noise. You can also see silent objects or creatures if you emit a sound. Supernatural vision. You can detect supernatural energy and roughly identify what kind of energy it is. Thermal vision. You can detect heat signatures and minute differences in temperatures. X-ray vision. You can see through objects and creatures. Sometimes features and abilities talk about a bright light source. This can be anything from a flashlight to the sun itself. Weaker light sources like a burning match or moonlight do not count as bright light sources. Traveling. Your characters will probably have to do a lot of traveling. Here you can see suggested traveling times for different modes of transportation. Consider that difficult terrain like mountains and swamps might slow you down significantly or be unsuitable for specific vehicles and mounts. Scavenging for food and water. Your characters will not always be in a place where they can just buy their next meals. Sometimes they have to scavenge the land or go hungry. A character can go searching for food in the wilderness. They have to make a survival check for every hour they spend searching. Depending on what environment they are in and the result of the survival check, they can find different qualities of water and food. This does not work if they are in an environment with nothing to eat or drink. In this table, you can see how much they can find. The numbers represent enough water or food for one normal person. So, if, for example, you rolled an 8 on the survival check in a normal environment, you would find either enough water for one person, enough food for one person, enough food and water for one person, enough food for two persons, or enough water for two persons. The GM decides what exactly you find. Depending on the time of year, an environment can be more or less abundant with food. A pine wood forest could count as desolate in the winter, or a savanna could become lush during the rainy season. Harvesting material Your characters can not only buy materials from merchants. The world is full of useful resources that can be harvested directly. Enemy weapons can be dismantled into parts. 
Mighty beasts can be skinned for leather, and magical plants dot the lands waiting to be used for potions. If you try to harvest materials, you will need to make a skill check. Different skills can be used to harvest from different sources. Here is a list of suggestions on how you can use skills, but the GM can add options that fit your setting. How much material you can harvest depends on your environment or the average tier of items that a creature has and its rank. The tier of natural weapons, armor, and equipment is also taken into account. To salvage materials from a creature, you will require 10 minutes per creature. To salvage materials from the environment, you will require one hour. Here is a list of how many credits worths of materials you can get on average, depending on the skill check result. Boss value is multiplied by their grade. Diseases. Diseases are something that can always stick you and your allies. If you are exposed to infected materials or creatures, or exposed to extreme conditions, the GM might rule that you have to make a constitution DR. On a failure, you are infected with a disease. The symptoms might not imminently manifest, taking a few hours or days to surface. Here are some examples of diseases that you might encounter. Cold. Make an endurance skill check whenever you make a skill check, DR, or weapon attack, or use an ability. The suggested value is 4. On a failure, you automatically fail the skill check, DR, or weapon attack, or nullify the ability that you used. Make an endurance skill check every 24 hours. The suggested value is 5. Taking it easy for the day grants you an advantage on those endurance skill checks. If you succeed two times in a row, you are cured of the cold. Fever. You are constantly tainted while you have a fever. Make an endurance skill check every 24 hours. The suggested value is 7. Taking it easy for the day grants you an advantage on those endurance skill checks. On a failure, you gain one level of exhaustion. You are cured of the fever if you do not have any levels of exhaustion for 24 hours after the first 24 pass. Plague. Your maximum vitality is reduced by 1d12 and by another 1d12 for every 24 hours that pass. You die if your maximum vitality drops to zero. Make an endurance skill check after every 24 hours. The suggested value is 9. Taking it easy for the day grants you an advantage on those endurance skill checks. If you succeed two times in a row, you will start to recover, gaining 1d12 to your maximum vitality every 24 hours until you reach your normal maximum. Once you have reached your normal maximum vitality, you are cured of the plague. Examples of prices Sometimes your characters need or want to spend credits on something other than items and upgrades. Here you can find a list of prices that the GM can use to determine prices for all sorts of goods and services. You might also want to hire people for different tasks. Here you can see examples of how much you normally pay a person for different jobs with different skill levels.